Hey, this is Lloyd speaking. Go away. Ever make a cold call and have that happen to you? Well, your luck, because today I'll be sharing with you the perfect cold call process to absolutely hook the prospect's attention so that you can ultimately book way more sales calls than you ever have before. Hey guys, my name is Lloyd Yip and I am a professional sales trainer and consultant and I've helped over 130 plus companies around the world build epic sales teams and create awesome sales processes that have helped them grow their businesses. And today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you exactly what I found to be the most effective cold calling strategies that I've discovered in the last 10 years of doing business development as my profession. So I'm going to be actually going into the script today with you word by word, line by line. But the first thing that I wanted to do was to actually go through a couple best practices that you wanna embody in any cold call that you're actually doing. Now, the first best practice is that you wanna understand that calling is a numbers game at the end of the day. You can have the best conversion rate ever when you're on the phone, but the reality is, if someone is literally calling 100 times every single day and you're only calling 20 times, it's likely that they're still gonna outperform you. So it just goes to show that even if you're proficient, nothing will ultimately replace just having hard work and volume of dials when it comes to getting your end results. Now the second best practice I want you to understand is that your tech setup is actually key. Because today, there are so many softwares that will allow you to do your job more effectively. Whether it be your CRM, whether it be Go High Level or Close IO, where there's a built-in dialer right in the software that allows you to just bang out call after call after call, or other tools such as Gong IO that'll allow you to listen to your recordings in order for you to improve your performance over time. The third thing is always double dial. And what I mean by double dialing is the first time you pick up the phone and call someone, the odds are they're just not gonna pick up. But if you call them again right after, a lot of the times you'll actually have that same prospect who didn't pick up the first time actually pick up the second time. Now why is that? Well the reasoning is because a lot of the times when you see an unknown number on your phone, you're just gonna think it's some sort of misdial, so you don't end up picking up. But you see it dial twice in a row, you start to think, oh, maybe this was important. What is this? I can't miss this. So they'll actually pick up the phone. In fact, for me, I've actually had people call me multiple times and I didn't pick up. But then when I saw my missed calls and I saw someone pick up the phone multiple times to try to call me, I think, oh, maybe it's like a doctor or maybe it's something important. So I'll even call them back. What that essentially means is double dialing will give you more bang for your buck per time spent than just calling once and giving up as soon as they don't pick up the phone. So I would highly encourage you to double dial. Now I'm gonna go into the actual cold call script right now, but before I do, please hit that notification bell so that you stay notified of whenever new videos come out because I make them every single week, like and subscribe as well. All right, so in this screen share, I'll be just going through with you the outbound call script that we actually use internally for our own sales team. So this thing has been battle tested thousands of times, has booked us so many calls, and you're gonna be getting this for free as well. If you wanna download this, just go to the uh, description box in the link below and you can actually grab this, uh, your own copy, and then modify it a little bit. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to take this word for word, but this is a really good skeleton to base your own script off of. So with that being said, let's get straight into it. The first thing that you're gonna wanna know is that the initial 15 to 20 seconds of any cold call or outbound call is the most important part of the call. Because if you aren't able to capture someone's attention and hook them, then you're pretty much going to just lose the call, lose the prospect, lose the booking. So that's why the first sentence that we say, we're going to try to insert something which is highly relevant to them so that they are willing to give you an extra 45 seconds to more than that, hopefully. Um, and that way you can properly pitch. So that first point of relevancy can be based off of something that they've done. It can be based off of an action that they've taken. It can be based off of just something that's true or relevant in their life. So here's a couple examples. Let's say they bought a, a mini course from you earlier on your website, or they downloaded some sort of ebook. You can call that out. Or maybe you noticed 
uh, that they're advertising for a role on LinkedIn or that their website has something interesting that you can reference. You can call any of this type of stuff out as long as it's also relevant, obviously, to you. So an example of this could be, hey, is this Sarah speaking? Amazing. This is Lloyd here. I was actually calling about the ebook that you downloaded from our site earlier about how to hire the best sales reps, right? So that's an example of something that you could say. And assuming these are accurate and that they're true, they're going to immediately pay attention because you're shouting something out that they've actually done or participated in in the past. Now, after you say this line where you're talking about something that's relevant to them, you want to then ask them a question so that they start conversing and dialoguing with you. And the best way to ask a question is to pretty much once again, call out something that is likely to be relevant to them. So what I prefer to do is, hey, it seems like you're currently trying to scale up your sales team and improve your sales. Is that true? Is that accurate? And the reason why I like this question is because it starts the process of learning about their goals and their objectives. Now, if you are able to get them to say, yeah, that's actually something that I'm interested in, you already have your foot in the door. At the worst case scenario, just by at least going in and telling them, hey, it seems like you have this goal, it seems like you're trying to achieve this, it at least shows that you've done a bit of research and you have some awareness of what their focuses and priorities are, which definitely buys you a lot of time. The typical salesperson and the typical cold calling script doesn't do this because the typical script is much more just pitching, right? You pick up the phone, you say, hey, is this Sarah speaking? Great, this is Lloyd. I have this thing that I want to sell you and they've already tuned out. They don't care. At the end of the day, people are much more worried about their own issues in their business than trying to help you out by giving you their 30 minutes of time so that you can pitch them later. But with asking this question, hey, it seems like you're currently trying to achieve this sort of goal. You're currently trying to scale up your sales team. Is that correct? You're now making it about them. And this is how you can actually capture that attention and be on your way to success when it comes to these calls. Okay. And by the way, worst case scenario, even if they disagree, let's say they say, oh, I'm actually not looking to uh, scale my sales team, then you can either just disqualify that lead because they're a bad fit. You don't need to waste any more time trying to convert them or close them. Uh, or you can overcome some objections, right? Let's say someone says, you know what? Yeah, I'm not really looking to try to scale my sales team at the moment. You could go down the path of, oh, if you're not looking to try to scale your sales team, why did you download our ebook about how to hire the best sales reps? Are you at least trying to grow right now? And depending on their answer, you can obviously take the conversation a different direction. But at least now you know that, you know what, maybe the sales team isn't a priority and you can focus on something else. Okay. So to summarize this early 15 to 25 second intro, it's about being friendly, having great rapport, capturing their attention early by saying something that's highly relevant and then asking a question that'll discover their goal, their objective and show them that you've done a little bit of research, which also will help you hook their attention. Okay. So at this point, the prospect should be responding. Like I had said earlier, ideally they respond in a way which is just positive as in, yeah, like I am looking to scale my sales team. Now you have your opening. You can now say, yeah, okay, amazing. That's exactly why I wanted a call. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time since I know that you weren't expecting this call, but the reason why I wanted to reach out is because it seems like you guys are currently trying to scale your sales team. And that's actually what we help by. We actually help, um, agencies or SaaS uh, or software companies, just like you guys, uh, build a super effective sales team so that they can ultimately generate more leads and close more deals. So would you say that this is one of your biggest priorities to solve right now? All right, let me break down why this works so well. First of all, this line here where you're actually saying, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know this call was unexpected. And this is really powerful because it time constrains the conversation. A lot of the time people will get nervous when they get cold called because they don't really know how long you want to talk to them for. And they don't know who you are, obviously. So if they're thinking, oh, this person's going to take up 10, 15 minutes of my time, they're just going to come up and invent excuses to get off the phone. Whereas if you show a little bit of empathy, if you have the awareness of saying, hey, like I recognize that 
I called you unannounced and I'm not going to take up too much of your time, a minute or two max. That might actually be the reason why they give you a minute or two max, right? So that's why we say this line. And then immediately after we give the justification as to why we're calling. Reason why I called is because I know you guys have this specific goal or this pain and that's why we reached out because we actually help customers like yourself achieve this specific goal by overcoming the specific pain. So all of these things are highly relevant to them once again, right? Now, this is actually why we asked them the question earlier, which is, hey, it seemed as though you're trying to achieve this goal or it seemed like you're trying to overcome this pain. Is that accurate? As soon as they give you the confirmation, then you know that you're in the right path. Then you know you can actually use what they had just said as ammunition for you to make this reason why I called line extremely powerful, right? Like imagine if you asked earlier, hey, it seemed as though you were struggling with lead generation and you wanted to improve your growth. Is that accurate? They say yes. Then you can be like, hey, that's why I called. It seemed as though you guys are struggling with lead generation. We actually help customers in your position, building agencies, scale their lead generation by building a sales team, right? Now that it's so hyper relevant to them, there's no reason why they're going to say no. Right. So the final uh, line here, the question that we're going to be asking to continue the conversation is just, hey, is this one of the biggest priorities for you to solve right now? Now, this should be a very easy leading question for you to be able to get them to say yes to, because technically they've already said yes earlier that this is relevant, that this is important. But getting them to say yes again and again is just a good pattern for you to have them uh, go through verbally. And the other thing that is important is right now, because it's one thing for them to be interested in lead generation or interested in building a sales team or interested in solving whatever problem that you want to solve in your business. But it's a different thing for them to say right now. So that's why you want to get a sense of if this is a priority at this particular moment in time, if it sounds like it's urgent, then you have more emotional leverage. So that's why I like to have this as my question to move on in the conversation. So the prospect responds and ideally they say, yep, this is a priority right now. And by doing that, by saying that they pretty much validate everything that you've been asking so far, they validate the urgency. Now, of course, if they say no, then you're going to want to ask, oh, that's interesting. Why is it not a priority? And you're going to have to go through a totally different line of questioning. But assuming they do say yes, you move on with the script. Okay. Now the next section here is actually optional. You don't have to do this. And I'll be telling you in a moment when you should actually deploy this line. But essentially what this line is, is just asking the prospect, all right, so what do you think your biggest challenge is when it comes to achieving this goal? More than happy to just give you some recommendations right now. That'll be helpful, right? So the reason why you want to ask this is to generate more credibility because a lot of the times if you tell someone, Hey, I can help you achieve X, Y, and Z because they don't know who you are because they're skeptical. They might not just take your word for it. They might be like, Hmm, why should I trust you? Why should I book a call with you? Why should I believe that you can actually do what you're saying you can do? So by asking this question, Hey, like what is your biggest challenge? Let me give you some recommendations right this moment. It might actually allow you to gain some credibility, um, by giving them assistance right then and there. Okay. Now this obviously relies on the fact that you are intelligent enough about your particular topic that if they were to tell you, yeah, so my biggest issue right now is, um, I'm just having a hard time scaling my lead generation. Obviously you need to be able to provide an answer, which is effective that can help, right? You can only gain credibility if you can walk the talk, so to speak. That being said, if you're able to do this, it really, really does work. Now, a couple things to note you don't want to ever give away too much information here because in the same way that if you already know the ending of a movie, you're not going to want to watch the entire movie. If you tell them all the juicy details in the cold call, they're not going to have enough reason to jump on the full demo call where you're going to give them a proper sales pitch. So give them just enough that they know that you're credible, but then leave out enough that as soon as they're kind of wanting more, you can say, listen, this is great. I've given you some information, but for me to give you like a proper set of recommendations, let's just book this 30 minute call and we can share a little bit more. So 
you got to keep them wanting a little bit, right? So the question is, when do you deploy this particular strategy? Well, the situation that you would deploy the strategy is when it doesn't seem as though you have enough buy-in from the prospect. It doesn't seem like they trust you enough. It doesn't seem like they're excited enough. Um, that's when you need to do this in order to build a little bit more credibility so that when you do ask to jump on a phone call with them, they trust you. Now, the situations in which you don't need to ask this is when it seems as though they are in a lot of pain, that it seems like they're trying to achieve this goal with a lot of urgency, or when they already know you a little bit, let's say they downloaded an ebook from you, or they potentially bought one of your uh, lower priced offers, and you're just giving a call to follow up. When there's a little bit more built in trust or that you can sense they're really eager, that's when you can just skip this and go straight for the pitch, okay? So that's pretty much the next section. If you are to go straight for the pitch or if you are to finish this uh, credibility section and now you're about to go for the pitch, how does that look? Well, you say, okay, that makes sense, amazing. So like I said earlier, I wanna be respectful of your time. And truthfully, I'm not here to try to sell you anything. I'm actually just reaching out because we do free consultations where we show agency owners, software founders, or whoever your avatar is, how they can actually achieve that desired outcome. In my case, we might say, hey, we literally just show uh, other business owners how they can pretty much generate 20 to 40 extra sales calls a month guaranteed. Would that be valuable for you? And of course, they should say yes at this point because they already told you they have this goal, they have urgency to try to achieve this goal, maybe they have some specific issues or problems that they don't know how to overcome. So at this point, they should totally be saying yes, that would be valuable. And then that's when you actually wanna book the call. Now, sometimes you might just wanna give them your calendar link or you might just try to find a specific time in your calendar. And regardless of which way you do it, that's fine. The only thing that I wanna to say to end off is you want to make sure that you're not jumping on a bunch of calls with poor fit prospects, right? So if you do have a set of qualification criteria that people have to meet before you're willing to jump on a full 30 minute or hour long demo with them, now is the right time to ask them, Hey, do you have the budget? Hey, are you the decision maker? Hey, whatever else it may be. And I have some examples here. The reason why I don't like to ask these qualification criteria earlier is because earlier you haven't really built any trust. You haven't built any rapport. They don't even know who you are yet. So if you start asking them like, Hey, do you have a ton of money to spend into this thing? Even if they do have a lot of money, they're going to be like, I don't know who you are. So the answer is no. Right. But now that they actually want to jump on this call with you, now that they see the value in what you guys provide, now you can actually say, all right, so typically we are only going to be able to add value to companies that are already above 20 K a month. Is that you, or we're only going to be able to help people who are truly committed to their weight loss and ready to invest money and time into their health. Is that you, right? So whatever the qualification criteria is that you want to understand, ask it now that they're actually invested in talking to you and then get them to confirm. And if they do, then you can send them over your calendar link, or you could just book the call right there on the spot. Um, and if not, then you probably just need to disqualify. So this is essentially the outbound script that we have. And once again, you can just download it below in the description box and you can use it for your own business. So hopefully that script was really helpful. I want to go through a couple additional best practices that you really want to keep in mind as you're going through this cold calling process, regardless of whether you're selling B2B or B2C. Okay. Now the first thing that you want to keep in mind is that we do not want to ever pitch outright from the start of the call. And I mentioned this earlier while I was going through the script, but it's such a bad practice to try to pitch someone who doesn't know who you are in the first 10 seconds. They're usually just going to hang up the phone because they don't know who you are and you haven't shown any value or credibility yet for you to deserve them just saying, yeah, fine, let's jump on a call. Instead, you want to discover, build a little bit of rapport, understand their goals and objectives. And only when you do that, do you want to then pitch? Okay. So the second thing that you want to do is that you want to make sure that you're selling, not the product, but you're selling the call. Okay. Because the reality is you're pretty much never going to be successfully pitching and closing a deal on a cold call, especially if this is someone who does not know who you are. So the goal of a cold call is always to just try to book them into a secondary call for you to then do your proper pitch. So a mistake that I see reps making all the time is they jump on a cold call and they try to convince someone that, Oh, my product is amazing. 
when in reality, all you need to do is get them to see, hey, I can add a ton of value to you. I can teach you how you can execute or achieve X, Y, and Z. But the only way we can do that is by jumping on this call. So let's book that. And you're actually framing this call to in and of itself be a value so that they don't feel as though, oh, I'm going to jump on the sales call and I'm just going to get pitched the entire time. No, when you can frame the call in and of itself as being valuable, then they'll jump on with a very high show up rate. And then once you're in that call, you can of course pitch, right? But you're trying to maximize not only the call booking rate, but also the show up rate when you're on the cold call. The next thing you do is you want to have positive tonality throughout the entire call. Be friendly, smile when you're talking. That actually goes such a long way. And the final thing that I'm going to say is make sure that after you book a call, send them a follow up, send them a reminder because the job is not done until they actually show up to the real sales call. So hopefully this has been really helpful in terms of you learning how to cold call better and book more meetings. If you actually end up getting stuck with objections during this cold call, which will happen more often than not, there's actually a three step method that'll allow you to overcome any objection and still book the meeting. And if you want to learn how to do that, just check out this video above where I break those three steps down in extreme depth. So with that being said, hopefully this was enjoyable to you. I actually help both entrepreneurs and individual sales reps improve their own growth and income when it comes to sales, sales skills, sales operations. So if you want to partake in that, definitely just find my calendar booking link in the description box below and we can have a quick conversation, see how I can help you out. As well, we have a ton of additional videos up above here that allow you to continue to improve your skills as an entrepreneur and a salesperson. So check those out if you haven't already. With that being said, I'll see you next time. Cheers.